Welcome in to the Wednesday Hump Day edition of the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller on July 21st. You know that we only have one more day of cancer season. We become Leos tomorrow, boys and girls. And we have a Venus sign change tonight. I thought we might stop and talk about that. We do have also today the moon moving into Capricorn. All the times given Eastern, as always, Eastern U.S., 6.36 p.m. The moon moves into Capricorn after a whopping 11-minute void of course. (laughs) Not much of an interruption in your day, right? So we'll be Capricorn. We'll be structurally thinking soundly over the next couple of days from Luna's energy. But I did want to focus on Venus moving into Virgo. I actually was working on this section of the course over this past weekend, so this is fresh on my mind. And yes, it's coming. It's coming very soon. Stay tuned. I'll let you know. We're going to open the doors and let some beta folks come on in. And don't worry, you'll have time. This is not like the other deal. And I'm not trying to play, you know, you know me, I'm not trying to play internet marketing games. It's just I'm going to open it up for a little bit and we'll let some folks in. And then it will be in development for a few months and then we'll release it for good, and everybody can come in whenever they want in the fall. It will be a little bit discounted on the front end, where it probably won't be on the back end, because it is a lot of work. But just stay tuned. I'll let you know. The window of action, probably about 48 hours, 72 hours, two or three days. So if you're interested, just stay close, and I'll have an announcement on all the episodes. So if you miss the one where it opens up, don't worry. It'll be on everything, everywhere you touch the podcast, and it will be prominently displayed on the website. I digressed. Sorry, I just wanted to give you an update on that. Last week set me back, obviously. Now, back to Venus in Virgo. Okay, one of the things that we have to acknowledge, and I'm definitely laying this out in the course, and I think it's something that as you're learning astrology, you need to know is what is called detriment, exaltation, and fall. Now, if you're Steve Forrest and you're just worried about the soul's journey, you don't consider things like Venus being in fall in Virgo. What does that mean, being in fall? Well, the ancients believed that every sign has a ruling planet. We've got that down, right? So we know that Venus rules the signs Libra and Taurus. Well, the ancients took that a step further, and they looked across the chart. Remember how everything is so keyed into oppositions in astrology. So the ancients looked across the chart. So for Taurus, they saw Scorpio, and they felt that Venus was in detriment if it was in Scorpio. In other words, it's grumpy. It's not going to be operating like a Venus in Libra or a Venus in Taurus. It's going to be scowling. It's going to be hiding from that tail. It's going to be looking in every shoe. I mean, every time it puts a shoe on, it whacks it on the bed three or four times to make sure that little scorpion is not up in there. And it prays to the heavens for God's sakes that it's not going to be in retrograde in Scorpio because it wants out of there as fast as it can. Well, there's a similar concept that the ancients also taught, and that is that there is a sign, but not the ruling sign, another sign where the planet is most compatible, where it feels good and it works best. And for Venus, that's Pisces. That's called the exaltation, the sign of exaltation. Well, if we do the same trick, we go to the other side. What's on the other side of Pisces? Virgo. So they just said, same thing, it's just not going to operate as well. It's in fall. So Venus is in fall in Virgo. Now, like I said, Steve Forrest on the soul's journey, Venus is doing its work in all of the signs. There is Virgo slash Venus soul business to be done for all of us. And that's what Venus being in that sign represents. And it's time to roll up our sleeves and do that business. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just what is. That's that kind of perspective. And I really appreciate that. But if you're going to extend into other areas of interpretation of astrology, for example, I've been doing this class with Robert Glasscock. I mentioned it on Monday on Horary. And by the way, I'll just drop another little seed here and I'll explain more later. But I think that there might be another Horary class coming up with Robert 
and I'm going to be in it. So if you would like to do that class with me online, I think it will be on Saturdays, uh, then I'll let you know when that comes up too, okay? But if you're going to study horary astrology, then knowing the detriment, exaltation, and falls is basically part of the interpretation, as it would be in mundane astrology or medical astrology. And if you're just looking purely at Hellenistic techniques, then yes, it's definitely part of that interpretation as well. So to be well-rounded, it definitely is something that you would want to be aware of. So for about the next three and a half weeks, Venus is, well, just keep in mind that it's going to be a little grumpy and it's going to be doing some soul business as well. Now, one of the energies that we could apply from this that we can kind of print in our minds is that Virgo likes things organized. Virgo wants things done properly. Virgo wants an answer to every question, right? And when it doesn't get it, one of its characteristics is it can be critical. Venus represents relationships. So one thing you might just keep in mind over the next three and a half weeks is to give your partner a little bit of slack. In other words, if things don't meet up to expectations, don't just go straight to needing to have that conversation. Maybe work through some soul stuff instead. Maybe that's the focus of the conversation. Ah, what is this bringing up for us that we might work on together? That could be a great approach to this transit over the next couple of weeks. I hope you have a great hump day, and I will see you back tomorrow. We are rolling right on through this week. Have a great one. Take care, and I'll see you tomorrow.